thanks to Xtrail for um, sponsoring this um, great initiative, which I think has been uh, really helpful for um, helping just to improve the literacy um, about these, this, these emerging um, indications for radiation um, and benign diseases. So my name's Jared Martin. I'm a radiotherapy specialist um, in Australia. You'll see I've branded myself for this talk as a radiation physician because I really do see myself as a uh, doctor with expert at using expertise at using radiotherapy to help a wide range of uh, people, including people with cancer, but also people with benign conditions. And just in case you're uh, wondering what kind of uh, horrible place of the world we live in Australia, this is uh, my suburb. Uh, I live sort of on the left-hand side in one of the buildings and um, in the front in the foreground is one of the five beaches I have within uh, 15 minutes walk so you can all feel very sorry for the for the tough life we live down here in Australia. Just to give a quick overview of uh, Jupitron's disease it's one of these hyperproliferative conditions with um, excessive fibroblasts attracted to the fascia just under the skin of the uh, of the hands. The um, it's, it, it sort of has a um, well understood natural history Starts off in a nodular phase, which is really very proliferative with a lot of fibroblasts forming classically in the palm, but can occasionally be in the digits. Over time, and, and this is quite common in uh, Northern European populations, probably between 15 to 20% of people will have some sign of this early stage of the disease. Over time, the, um, some collagen will be laid down and you'll get to the cording phase. People often mistake this as being something affecting the tendons or the tendon sheaths which are all actually completely anatomically normal. This is actually the fascia and the, uh, the anatomical arrangement of the fascial fibres um, coming to prominence. So this is kind of applied anatomy for radiation uh, specialists to understand that this is not a, an issue with the tendons. And from our point of view, that's part of the reason why when we treat this condition, we only need to be delivering the radiotherapy dose just below the skin rather than all the way down to the tendons or any deeper. Um, and then the more advanced phase is when you end up with contractures and these um, collagen shortens over time and can lead to functional deficits. But probably one of the most important things to note that only a minority of people who start with the nodular phase will end up with a contracture. And, and the estimates vary, but it is probably somewhere closer to the 1% of the population. So the, the vast majority of people with nodules aren't, actually aren't going to run into any problems um, in the medium term. And just thinking what's going on in the fascia, that's obviously a, a lot of lot of cells. But from our point of view, the main culprits are these fibroblasts. And obviously they're a normal physiologically necessary uh, cell, cellular component of our um, extracellular matrix. Uh, but the problem with Jupitron's disease is because of the genetic predisposition that they're abnormally attracted to the, uh, the fascia of the palm and they're abnormally um, overactive, which can lead to um, excessive collagen deposition. Radiotherapy has been explored for many years uh, for Jupitron's disease, mainly in the early phases to stop people going from the nodular phase through to the uh, contracture phase. But as I sort of mentioned, the, the vast majority of people aren't going to actually end up with a contracture and this uncertain natural history about the pace of um, advancement, whether it's going to advance at all or whether it moves at intermittent paces where it might speed up and slow down over time, really means that there might be a lot of people that we treat early on who may not actually need um, treatment. Sometimes these nodules can be quite uncomfortable, but classically within three to six months, that discomfort will settle. And once again, you could apply some radiation to help with as an anti-inflammatory intervention and then claim credit for success of uh, something that was gonna settle down by itself. We do have the advantage of being able to manage most of the, uh, the fascia. I mean, the fascia is a complex structure, but we can manage really a lot of it at once, uh, which, which potentially can reduce problems from occurring in the future. And I guess ultimately what we're trying to do is stop more invasive treatments such as surgery or, or, or other approaches being necessary if someone does end up with a, uh, a contracture down the track. Now there's a lot of enthusiasm for the use of radiotherapy in Jupitron's disease. And in fact, this um, Facebook group has um, over 5,000 uh, members and a very active conversation. And really what, what, what you pick up from all this is that there's a lot of people just looking for, for answers and options, particularly in the early phase. And, uh, and, and radiotherapy has some runs on the board to potentially be able to help out in that regard. However, a lot of the evidence for radiotherapy is generally uh, retrospective, uh, single institution um, and, and non-randomized. 
And particularly for a disease with an uncertain natural history or an unpredictable natural history, you really do need a, a randomized control arm to get the credibility uh, for your results. Now, Professor Shigelsmith was the uh, initiator of the, the, the major clinical trial, uh, which did randomize between two doses of radiotherapy. Um, the control arm, however, was, uh, was, was non-randomized. And for this reason, the, um, a lot of international bodies um, really haven't um, embraced radiation um, for the prevention of um, Jupiter's disease um, progression over time. And in fact, the, uh, the British guidelines really say that you really need to be doing this as part of some sort of um, research or um, uh, enterprise um, moving forward rather than being embracing as a standard approach. And I guess we're reminded that the importance of randomized trials recently because uh, radiotherapy has been used for other benign conditions, and this is for osteoarthritis. And the Dutch actually did do a, um, a sham radiation randomized trial where half the patients got uh, radiation, the other half the patients got sham radiation, and both the oncologists and the um, um, uh, patients were blinded as to whether they got treated or not. And um, there's a lot, of, lot to unpack with this study as with any other, but I guess the take home message is that around about 30 to 40% of people got some sort of pain relief, whether they got placebo or, or radiation, which is actually kind of what you, what you would expect in any um, subjective endpoint um, for a clinical trial, that placebo effect of around 30% is very widely accepted. Um, and really no difference between the radiotherapy group or the sham group, um, you know, really raising questions about um, whether this should be um, widely delivered treatment moving forward without further research. I guess on the flip side, there are some risks with any medical intervention, but in the short term, the risks from radiation therapy, given that we're giving a relatively low dose of radiation, tend to be quite low. Now, you can get some skin redness, um, it, you know, fancy medical term, epidemial erythemia. A um, little bit of a dry hand, it's often not bone dry, and we do go to effort to not um, treat the, uh, the pulp at the end of the fingers, so you can still have uh, a little bit of grip from the, um, from the sweat glands there. But the thing we all worry about is second malignancies. However, we do try to risk manage that by only treating older patients who are at lower risk. Um, it's a peripheral area that isn't near any particularly radiosensitive structures in this regard. Small field and the doses are much lower. And overall, the estimate is somewhere up to about between one in 5,000 to one in 1,000 risk. That's um, quite conservative and that's on a back background of a one in four risk of just getting a cancer anyway, spontaneously in the environment. So in absolute terms, it's only making a relatively small increased risk. But it's not zero. So this is not a patient with Jupitrons, but a man who was treated over 40 years previously for excessive sweating of the palms, and he ended up with a squamous cell carcinoma in the palm, which was then neglected and, and got, got very advanced. Uh, this is the only case I'm aware of, of uh, radiation for a benign condition to the um, hands leading to a second cancer out of presumably many, many thousands that have been treated. But I guess we can accept that um, patients really do need to be counseled about uh, you know, keeping an eye on things uh, moving forward and, and, and acting early if they did notice any problems. So because of all of these issues, we have launched a randomized trial um, looking at the use of radiotherapy in Jupitron's disease. And we reversed engineered the uh, acronym DEPART about evaluating um, the use of radiation both in the preventative and the adjuvant um, settings. So the way it works is that we're looking for 372 um, hands with, with people with early stage progressive uh, Jupitron's disease. And by early stage, I mean that the contracture has to be less than 10 degrees because once you've got a lot of collagen laid down, that is acellular and it's not going to be affected by, uh, by the use of radiation. Um, and they have to have some tempo to the disease. So progression over the last 12 months and ideally over six months. The, um, the people that come in and, and for assessment who've had stable disease for many years or they've just noticed disease that may have been present previously but um, they've got no real time frame on it, we, we tend to counsel um, to continue observing rather than um, embarking on this trial. And as I say, we tend to not treat, um, treat young people, age limit of 30. Um, but the, and then the main, the randomization is between standard approach, which is observation, versus 10 sessions of radiotherapy with around six week uh, break in the middle, but though there is a bit of flexibility there and in between four to 12 weeks is acceptable. And the primary endpoint is really borrowed from a lot of the um, 
surgical and uh, collagenase studies in uh, Jupiter's disease that if they end up they need to have a salvage definitive intervention or they develop a greater than 20 degree contracture um, that counts as um, progression. The um, follow-up is quite strict. We've outsourced it to hand therapists who do measurements every six to nine months over the following five years. There's a lot of patient reported uh, questionnaires, toxicity assessments, and we're really just trying to get a really complete understanding both of the risks and benefits, if, if any, of the use of radiotherapy in this condition. I'll also mention that we are also looking in the adjuvant setting. So this is when people have had a contracture and they've had that uh, an intervention to straighten it out. Uh, the gold set standard um, is, is some sort of surgical fasciectomy and there's obviously a few ways that can be approached. Up until recently, we had collagenase um, injections, um, which, which kind of is sort of like almost like an acid that burnt away some of the um, collagen, but that's um, no longer available out of uh, North America. So that arm is um, unfortunately going to need to close. Um, and there's also a needle aponeurotomy, where, uh, which is also a sort of a, a relatively minimally invasive uh, procedure as well done under local anaesthetic. Um, however, all of these have some relapse risk and, and, and the numbers are a little bit rubbery, but probably somewhere between one in four and one in two people, depending on the intervention, are going to um, relapse over, over a five year period. So a lot of these treatments, they really sort of seem to be managing the condition rather than curing the condition. Now, radiotherapy has been used for other um, hyperproliferative um, conditions, such as uh, heterotopic ossification, uh, particularly around the hip, um, or keloids, which are also being discussed at this, uh, these webinar series. And so there are some runs on the board that uh, radiation used in other sites may actually dampen down um, um, the, the fibroblast proliferation that may lead to disease progression in, in, in Jupitrons as well. So that's really what we're exploring on the adjuvant aspects of the study. So very similar design as the uh, previous slide. Uh, people who've had any um, local treatment um, and have had some degree of, um, of flattening out of their hand um, to less than 10 degree contracture afterwards. So the, the procedure needs to be a success. And then afterwards, they just get randomized between observation, which is really, of course, all the hand therapy and splinting and, and, and other necessary wound management as well. And then arm two takes all of that and adds on exactly the same radiotherapy um, as in the prevention arm, but with a um, uh, very close uh, follow-up and, um, uh, and exactly the same endpoints. And anecdotally, um, this is one person coming in for their second um, course of radiotherapy. The right hand had just standard surgery followed without radiotherapy. The left hand had surgery without any radiotherapy and the, the scar was, was healing very well on, on the left, left hand and um, uh, the skin was very supple. And this is another lady who had um, a, a Brunner's scar on the uh, left uh, fifth digit, which my surgeon will claim was because of her expertise. It's disappeared, but she also had some radiotherapy afterwards as well. So we're getting some early reassurance this is a tolerable management. Uh, we run a Jupitrons clinic in Newcastle, which has had over 400 patients come through it over the last couple of years with a mixture of hand surgeons, radiation, radiation physicians, and a hand therapist. And Tanya Burgess, um, second from the right, has been the real driving force of this. And we usually get about 16 patients coming through each of these clinics where we um, um, assess them, educate them, uh, discuss with them the clinical trial um, and, and get very positive feedback from the patients about, um, about the experience. Just my last couple of slides, the, um, the trial's accruing well. We've opened now in uh, a bunch of centres in Australia with another couple coming up and hoping to open in uh, Groningen um, in the next couple of months as well. And then, um, and most interestingly, we've actually found Facebook um, ads to be the most um, useful way of, uh, of, of making people aware of this, this study as well, but we're using a whole bunch of approaches. So just my final slide, uh, we do need to generate some high quality evidence for the use of radiotherapy for any indication. Um, we're almost certain to reach our prevention cruel in the next uh, uh, couple of years. Um, the adjuvant arms are just getting off the ground. Uh, we really want to expand the culture of radiation to embrace, embrace benign diseases and really have a platform for future trials. There's a cast of thousands um, that I really got to acknowledge as helping out um, with, with all of this. And uh, really, I look forward to um, uh, help, helping patients move, 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 the, move the needle in the right direction moving forward. Um, I'm sorry I'm not going to be available to take any questions, but um, hopefully we'll be able to continue to correspond in the future. I thank you all for your attention.